In my previous video, I talked about Intel's innovation event, specifically about what they said about Alder Lake. You know, who it's for, what I think about its performance, and what I think about the overall platform pricing. But Alder Lake wasn't the only thing Intel showed off at that event. They talked about a lot of other things, including Intel Arc, at least briefly. They showed another XE super sampling demo that, as usual, looked impressive, at least in terms of image quality. Although, I gotta say that until you see quantified performance numbers, you can't really say anything. Any analysis of something like FSR or DLSS or XE super sampling, which they really aren't the same things, are useless to analyze unless you look at the performance gains. Although, I will say this, I don't really have any doubt in XE Super Sampling's ability to be a true competitor to DLSS. You know, everyone I talk to, both at Intel, connected to Intel, and outside of Intel, really don't doubt XE Super Sampling's ability to perform well at all. Intel's a big company. There's no reason they can't crush DLSS if they want to. They just need to write the actual code, which, on that note, I do want to talk about XE's release date because... As far as I can tell, honestly, when it comes to big, highest performing, discrete XE, it's really the drivers holding it back right now, not the actual silicon itself anymore. And I want to be clear that I think there's some misconceptions about what I mean about the drivers are holding it back. I I'm not saying that the drivers will hold it back, and I'm not saying that the drivers won't be finished in a good state eventually. I'm just saying that they aren't finished yet and that they will release the top card when they feel the drivers are mature enough to release it. Not that they won't ever become mature enough, but that that's why they're really focusing on the lower power releases first, because they believe they can have the lower power variants more optimized for performance before they have to really get every last percentage point out of their 200 watt plus cards, which I bring all of this up because there's been... Also some misconceptions about when Desktop XE is coming out, which I know Ian Cutris and other people ran a, some stories recently that talked about how Intel was confirming discrete XE would be ready in quarter one for desktop. When I saw these reports, you know, I've never doubted that it could launch in quarter one, but most of my information right now points to an early quarter two release, you know, at the earliest. And double checking with my sources, yeah, look, Here's what it comes down to. Everyone so far is pretty sure that Desktop XE is not coming out till quarter two. Laptop is coming out quarter one, but the desktop models at least won't be readily available until quarter two. That's still the input of all of my sources. And in fact, if I look at this slide here that everyone's using to confirm uh, is coming out in quarter one, it actually just says that XE is on shelves in quarter one, and XE will have the first discrete Intel GPU cards. That, that doesn't mean that the discrete desktop cards are coming out quarter one. In fact, if you actually read the transcript or listen to a recording of what Pat actually said, he talks about Intel revealing the brand for discrete cards and that their Alchemist product will be on shelves in quarter one of next year. I take this as him literally saying it's probably just laptop in quarter one, like I have confirmed. And it really frustrates me when there's reporting where people say something and don't even seem to have bothered reading what they're reporting on. Honestly, I think the most exciting part of this presentation was him talking about Meteor Lake on schedule and confirming once again that it has multiple tiles. That's way more exciting. So, so, so keep in mind what's going on here. Intel is not above this type of really specific wording to appease investors while really not launching products until a quarter later than they're making it like they are. That is still my current opinion of what's going on with desktop DG2. But all right, I gave some updated thoughts on the drivers, on the release date. What will these cards perform like in laptop? I've always been talking about desktop. And then on desktop... What do the real cards look like? Well, I have real pictures, not just renders, of Desktop XE, and I also have some updates on its laptop performance. I'm going to get to that in a minute, but first, an ad from a sponsor. Reesey, where are you? 
Reese here is not very good at hiding, and most web browsers are not very good at hiding or protecting your data. Today's video is brought to you by Atlas VPN. It's almost 2022. You should have a VPN to protect your data from hackers, governments, and advertisers, and enjoy streaming content that's usually arbitrarily locked from being watched in all regions of the world. Atlas VPN is offering you the standard features for just $1.39 a month for three years, and actually so much more. They also block ads and malware, including malicious links and trackers, and they try to get you the lowest price a company offers. You may not know this, but a lot of online storefronts adjust live pricing for products based on your exact location in recent searches. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means you can get a three-year subscription for just $1.39 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Time is running out. Get your deal by clicking on the link in the description that really helps Moore's Law is Dead. Download Atlas VPN today. Okay then, let's talk about some more Arc performance updates, including in the laptop. I've been speaking to some OEMs that are specking out pre-built systems with 225 watt ARC cards for quarter two. Again, they say quarter two is when they expect to have these pre-built systems ready bundled with Alderlake, not quarter one. And they can confirm that, yeah, this is the top configuration that they will be bundling so far. A 225 watt card with 512 execution units and that the laptop parts they are specking out fall just short of the very top laptop Ampere cards. When I pushed my sources for what that meant, one person was specific. It's like, yeah, the top TDP version of the 3080 laptop edition, which is really a slightly lower clocked 3070 Ti with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6, not GDDR6X. And so from that, I think we can say this. We can really draw a conclusion here. It seems like it's fair to say that Intel could get close to a 3070 Ti, but no one should bet on it beating it, and it's going to beat the 3070. And then we can also say that in the sub-75 watt categories, I think Intel may have some real winners here. But now that I've given you some performance updates, which is to say in the upper end of laptops, NVIDIA is still probably going to have the lead, but in the low end, Intel is going to have some real winners in efficiency, including on desktop. Let's now take a look at what these cards actually look like. So this first picture I'm showing you guys here is actually the 512 execution unit DG2. This is something that one of my best sources was willing to go to bat for me to get a hold of after seeing my renders I put together with some other sources. So to be clear, this isn't like a random email that was sent to me. This is from a long-term source that has got me a lot of reliable information for years. And decided, you know what, you have the renders, I'm going to go get you the real pictures. And, well, there it is. That's what it looks like. And then here's the back of it. I don't have much I can do with this, and it's heavily redacted to protect my source, but I assume someone like Igor can take this and run with it and draw some conclusions. Maybe Buildzoid can. And, you know, I just want to be clear that I'm showing these real pictures, even though they look exactly like the renders, not just to say I'm right again, but to make it clear that moving forward, there's a lot of upcoming products I know about that aren't public, and I really want to hire on a full-time renderer if we can get enough patrons to show you more stuff that is literally what these products look like. This is so that in the future, I can say to you guys, hey, this isn't me guessing. This really is what it looks like, even if it's a render. And hopefully you'll believe me when you now know that I wasn't kidding. Those renders we did really are what this actually looks like. And in fact, I have real pictures of the 128 execution unit model, but I, I can't elaborate on why, but the pictures aren't really safe to show yet. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. But what I will say is this isn't based on input from multiple sources. This is based on looking at the real card. So this is right here what the 128 execution unit model looks like. There is no 6-pin. It uses less than 75 watts. And it is expected to get close to a 1650 Super, which if you think about it, the 1650 Super was around a 100-watt card. You know, Turing isn't that much less efficient than Ampere, what the 1650 Super is. So if Intel gets close to the 1650 Super, which, you know, from leaked slides we know that they should, but I'm still a little skeptical on what that really means. If they get close to it while using around 60 watts, well, that tells you that, yeah, the lower clocked versions of uh, XE are a lot more efficient than Ampere and possibly more efficient than Navi 24. And yeah, I think that's really exciting. And in fact, OEMs are jumping for joy at these parts. I actually have a quote here to show. 
You see, OEMs are tired of selling you 1050 Ti's and 1660 Ti's as the entry-level graphics card in pre-configured desktop systems. They don't want to rip you off. HP, Dell do not want to rip you off. They just don't have new low-end cards from NVIDIA. And so they're really excited for even Navi 24, but especially 128 execution unit arc that won't require any six pin unlike desktop Navi 24. You know, these are cards that they can have their pre-built gaming systems maybe start at $500 and they get a good deal because it's bundled with maybe a non-KI5. You know, those Alder Lake i5 that will be six big cores and no little cores. But again, Golden Cove's IPC is very good and it won't need DDR5 since it's just six cores. So yeah, they think they can make some really cost-effective systems that game around as well as a 5800X with a non-KI5 and what will probably be about 1650 performance except using less energy. They're really excited to finally offer you guys something that isn't like three-year-old graphics cards and that's why they're looking forward to ARC. Um... Well, so what have I done here? I've updated you on the expected release dates for these models, which is to say ARC is launching in quarter one, but I would not expect real availability of the desktop cards till quarter two. Just that's not what any source tells me, despite Intel's somewhat misleading slide there, in my opinion. And I've also confirmed why it's probably not coming out in the top end configuration till quarter two. The drivers aren't done, but they will be. And in laptop, I think these are going to be efficient, interesting cards, but they aren't going to bring new performance levels to laptops and of course i've also shown you pictures of actual z and yeah that's it that's gonna do it for this video thank you for watching please double check that you've subscribed to the moore's laws dead youtube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss upcoming leaks from this channel we have a big leak coming about well i've hinted at it in the other video I, it, the, amd's got some crazy stuff coming so you're not going to want to miss that and then uh as always as well remember that you know, we really can't do this without support from our patrons. You get tons of exclusive ad-free content every week, the ability to ask me and guest questions. Don't miss that resource as well. And then, of course, for everyone who's made it this far, as always, just thank you for watching.